so many uh, facets of this racism issue. Uh, one of the things that is very prevalent today and it bears a lot of examination is uh, the Ferguson issue. Uh, how many black men are being shot and killed every day just because they're black? Um, you can say Michael Brown did this, did that. Uh, the cops shot him from 20 feet away. Michael was running away. Now, whether they struggled for the gun in the car or not, the policeman has a gun. Michael does not. Michael was shot six times from 20 feet away, two times in the head. How many times do you have to shoot somebody to put them down? And why must that brother then be killed? Why had, could he not be shot in the leg, bring him down, then you can cuff him? No, he had to be killed. In my opinion, Officer Wilson wanted to kill Michael Brown. Why? Why did he have to die? The overzealousness of the authorities, our, the police officers that are, that, that are taking a, an oath to protect and serve, they seem to have a whole other way of dealing, policing a certain segment of our population than they do another segment of our population. You know, black men are being killed. I mean, I'm concerned about my son. I don't have any kids. Okay. My brother has two kids, mm -hmm. two sons, okay? My niece has a son. Uh, my sister has a son, right? Some of my best friends have male children, black men, biracial men who in the society, and you know, are considered to be black, whatever they identify themselves as, this will say somebody looking at them, they're black. And they then have to be, I'm concerned about how they're gonna make it from point A to point B without being accosted in some way. Yes, I think we're, it might surprise people to know that we're all concerned about this because we're all starting to feel this feeling that our privacy and our rights are being you know, taken away, rightfully or not. We're afraid, we're afraid of being stopped all the time. Even other people, maybe in uh, black culture, they don't realize that it happens to all of us, not at the level that it's happening to you, but it is happening to everyone. Well, you know, um, everything happens to everybody, mm -hmm. okay? And you can't really deny that. However, I have to be concerned, and this is for all the statistic-minded people out here, the prevalence of black men being stopped and frisked, as opposed, black men or people, men of color, as, as opposed to, to, to white men being stopped and frisked, you know? A black man will be stopped and have his pockets emptied and have nothing while the white guy in the suit with a pocket full of cocaine strolls right by the officer. This happens too often yeah. to, to I, not be spoken about, right? Can I ask you a question? Sure. Is this kind of thing happening to the black women as well? You know, um, We things, really don't hear these stories. Things happen to black women um, because they're black. Uh, there's something in, in the zeitgeist called uh, microaggression, you know, people doing and saying things that they think are cool or down and they're, they're really not. Uh, since I'm not a black woman, mm -hmm. I, can, I can't speak from experience, but as a black person, I can say with all you know, confidence that I'm sure black women have their thing that they have to deal with too, just as all women do. There was a video released recently about a woman walking through different neighborhoods and dealing with cat calls all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, so women, you know, catch hell sometimes, you know. So if you're a woman and you're black, yeah, that's kind of double indemnity, you know. You, yeah. You're getting it from a couple of other And if you're sides. older. Please. Or, or, or too young. <laughs> There's you know. just too many things to choose from. There's too many things. And do you think that touches on a bigger psychological issue that, well, here's what I think. I think that mankind in general feels the overpopulation squashing their opportunity. And so the, the gut reaction is to eliminate the competition. Well, um, overpopulation, uh, there's room for everybody, um, I'm thinking. Um, that we, can, we can go off into the immigration situation. You know, we don't wanna have these people coming in and taking our jobs, but these people coming in and taking our job, a lot of them, have in their other countries mm -hmm. held positions of you know 
doctors, oh, lawyers, yeah. they come I mean, here and, and upper crust, accept and then, a lower end job, yeah. and then have to work in a bodega to make ends meet because mm -hmm. they can't get their profession that they've been doing all their lives codified. Then there are those other people who don't have that kind of education, right? That are coming for work in this country. And then those folks are doing, a lot of those folks are doing the jobs that not, none of us want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to be out there in the fields picking fruit, you know? Yeah, we're not going to be the delivery guy. But we like the, to sit in, in our house. Yes, yeah, and eat, we like to eat the fruit that's being picked. Who's going to pick the fruit? Right. Right? But we're going to get pissed at them because they're coming in and, and taking our job. I mean, it's, it's, it's fear. And mm -hmm. fear is kind of the antithesis to reason. You know, when you get so scared about something, no amount of someone telling you there's nothing to be afraid of is going to work. You got to have solid evidence, you know, well, to you put know, that fear at ease. The divide and conquer aspect. And when I say overpopulation, I'm talking from a worldwide point of view, that the world is just becoming a place where, you know, Especially here, we grew up thinking, okay, well, you know, if you get a good education and you try hard, you can be anything you want to be. And now we're finding out that's not really true. Oh, man. You know what I call that syndrome? I call that the pull yourself up by the bootstrap syndrome. Oh. Right, yeah. And that's about this, right? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But we're not going to let you get any boots. We're going to we're gonna restrict your ability to buy boots because we're not going to pay you a living wage so that you can pay your rent and then go buy some boots. But we're going to hit you over the head with the fact that you're supposed to be helping yourself. It's not a level playing field, but damn it, don't let anybody try to give you anything to make the playing field level so that you can then pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. I don't have any boots. You won't let me get any boots. And you're telling me to pull myself up by my boots. What kind of sense does that make? That's the kind of country uh, I, we're living in. Today. I think people with um, the means to pay their bills um, don't realize that you know some people they're actually worried about how they're going to feed their kids this week, and that's a real thing. They're not pretending. It's how many people? How different. many times have it's I heard difficult. that I don't want the government giving a handout to people who just don't want to work? There are folks who don't want to work. The white folks who don't want to work, the black folks, Puerto Ricans, everybody, there are some folks who just don't want to work. But does that give nod to the fact that there are people out here working six and seven jobs between two people, a husband and wife, and there are more full families, husbands and wives, working to you know, support their children in the black community than are given credit for? I mean, the mythology is that you know, there's no black man helping the black woman you know, support their family. But they're out there working their tails off, multiple jobs, trying to make enough money to make the rent. No nod is given to those people who need not a hand out, a hand up. You well, know? you know, the entitlement programs are sort of designed for failure because, uh, for example, to receive Medicaid, you're only supposed to earn $900 a month. Now, who in New York actually can live on $900 a month? Are you living in New York? <laughs> yeah. If you're no. living in New York, this is like, we know this is not possible. So it forces people to start lying and pretending that and working under the table. And they, they're really afraid to start working because that immediately puts them out of the range of getting some of the health programs that they were getting that keep them stable. So you're either working a low-end job and getting nothing or you're not working and you're getting a lot. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out well, which one's you know, easier to do. A lot is, is, is saying, uh, I think it's overstating. I mean, because um, I, my mom was on WPA, I mean, welfare, mm -hmm. public assistance. And um, she raised four kids by herself, mm -hmm. ostensibly, uh, with a hustle on side. You know, now, was, it, was the hustle legal? I, I really can't speak to. But my mother did more, and there, there are multitudes of mothers out there doing more with nothing, you know, the nothing that the government gives them. So when you're talking about the government giving you a handout, that pittance that the government gives barely covers the essentials. Exactly. You know, so you're not, like, living in palatial estates. There are going to be criminals everywhere, in every walk of life. In, in every race, creed, and religion, they're going to be criminals. I mean, I don't want to start too much of a firestorm, but yeah. look around you and you will see criminality everywhere. But people ultimately are just trying 
to live. And because of institutionalized, uh, basically codified discrimination on many levels, my expertise is racism, it makes it veritably impossible to go out here and, and come on, look, the middle class, the ladder to the middle class is, is, is drying up. The rungs have been broken. Sure. The middle class is being eradicated because they can't make it where they are. Don't even talk about trying to get somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, unless you make a money, you know, everyone, they talk about this nut. You have a nut to crack every month. Every month. That's your basic bill. So if you're not ever making that or you're just barely making that, you can never get off of that, that right. train that keeps you underachieving because right. you're always just struggling to make ends meet.